Master of Business in ERP System. And today I have a, a guest um, with me and whom I'm following and whom I'm checking out what he's doing and, and I've been waiting for him to talk to me. Um, so can you please uh, tell others who are you and what you do in the SAP field? Yeah. Hi, Angad. Um, my name is Josh Fletcher. Uh, I live in Perth, Western Australia, and uh, I work for a company called ASG Group uh, as an SAP BI architect, um, and I'm also one of the SAP mentors uh, in the current group. Oh, good, thank you. Um, so, uh, in this uh, with this company, you basically uh, so you uh, as you said, you are architect, a BI architect. So, you implement solutions, or you do the in-house. Uh, so you yeah, no, so we're a, we're a consulting company and a partner okay. of SAP. So um, we sell SAP software um, uh, and implement the solutions and support it as well. So uh, my work involves um, helping with the design of the solutions, um, managing the implementations with other consu and, you know, and other consultants uh, doing work as well. And um, I also uh, sometimes get involved in the support work too. Well, that must be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, nice and diverse. I'm actually we we also do training uh, for SAP too, so I'm um, I'm doing a bit more training for SAP as well at the moment. Oh, that's good. Yeah, um, from the training, I just have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I I started this biz uh, because I'm doing my masters from Victoria, so I did this um, subject called business intelligence in Victoria University, and truly speaking. Uh, until the end of the subject, I was thinking just the BI is only the business warehouse and the business objects mm -hmm. explorer, it's because they teach you the business warehouse how to how to create a cube in there, info cube, and um, yeah. and then get the data in a business object explorer. And but since then, I have gone to the SAP websites and I've seen different tools, but I always uh, get confused with all the uh, the division of these tools. So can you explain me what is business intelligence and why these are like a broken in a different or maybe uh, I should say uh, divided into the different fields and what is BI platform? No problem. So um, uh, some of it's uh, historical uh, uh, and, and has to do with SAP developing their own solution and then they also acquired business objects uh, which, which brought them um, some uh, uh, duplicate capabilities in their, their solutions. So if you look at um, the traditional SAP business intelligence platform um, uh, or SAP BI, that is the, the business warehouse, which is SAP's enterprise data warehouse, which is OLAP based. OLAP based, so yeah. So cubes. Okay. Um, and, and BW is quite um, special in that it combines a lot of different capabilities into the one platform. So. Uh, you probably know it's built on NetWeaver, but it um, yep. it lets you do ETL, both from yep. SAP and non SAP data sources. It lets you build um, your cubes um, and a dimensional model before you even get to your cubes. Yes, right. And then yep. lets you build a semantic layer on top of those cubes, which is the BEX query. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it also included, um, you know, BEX analyzer, BEX reporter, a lot of different reporting and analysis solutions uh, that were all part of SAP BW. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the traditional SAP um, yep. BI solution and their BI platform up until a few years ago. Uh, sorry, well, it's probably five or six years ago now when they acquired business objects. Objects, um, okay. And business objects was only uh, a business intelligence uh, company. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. So um, business objects had um, their own BI platform, which is called Business Objects uh, Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was um, uh, a Java and .NET platform. It ran in both versions at the time, and it included tools like Web Intelligence uh, and Crystal Reports, mm -hmm. uh, and a tool that's now been phased out called Desktop Intelligence. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, Desky, that's it. And, and SAP acquired Business Objects specifically for their um, best of breed business intelligence capability. Cool. All right. And also because it was heterogeneous in that it talked to any data source. Um, the SAP integration was okay, but not great, and that's something that they've been working on for the last several years as well. So, um, the, when when we when we say it's a SAP BI and it's they acquire the business objects, 
And then with the visual objects, they, they brought all those BI tools into, mm -hmm. into the SAP BI, like Crystal Reports, Dashboard Designer, uh, Desky, and then Web Intelligence, all that. So say I installed a BI platform uh, Edge edition on my computer, mm -hmm. or sorry, in my virtual environment. So with that platform, did have I installed the because I, I just did it two days ago and I don't understand. But did I have I installed all the tools with it, or I have to install the tools separately, the rich client separately on a desktop? Um, yes. Okay. So th that. Yeah. So yep. um, Business Objects Edge is effectively a mid-market version of Business Objects Enterprise. Um, it's, it's the same code base and it does the same thing. It's just limited to run on one system, one server instead of a clustered environment. Um, but you have support there to, to build web intelligence reports um, via the web um, mm -hmm. and to run and view crystal reports and dashboards. Um, and, uh, but to build crystal reports uh, or develop them and to develop dashboards, you need uh, a rich client tool to be installed as well. Um, the web intelligence rich client um, is not is optional. You don't need it because you can build the reports via the web. Right, um, okay. And then the other thing you'll need to install is the, the client tools to let you build the universe, the semantic layer for business objects. Okay. So if you're going to be um, building universes, you'll need that. All right, cool. So And then you can use those universe with the different uh, tools, other tools as well. Yeah, all the, all the tools yeah. will talk to the, oh. the same universe. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's, that's great. Okay, so um, well, I have worked with Crystal Reports and Dashboard Design. Uh, so if I say, if uh, just like for the business point of view, can mm -hmm. the businesses, um, if they if they say we need to do reporting, we need to create a dashboard. From a business point of view, do they really need a whole platform, or they just just can have a Crystal Reports uh, or the dashboard, um, like? Just, just to create the reporting and the uh, visual dashboards, or what's a what's a benefit for the businesses to have a whole platform together, whole BI yeah, sure. together. So, um, so, so there's a couple of of um, points I can make there. First of all, um, tools like Crystal Reports, especially, um, are much more report development tools, uh, and they require um, more of an IT background. So mm -hmm. business people might struggle to develop crystal reports, for instance. Something like web intelligence, um, they, they will be able to learn and use. Um, but then there's tools like uh, Explorer, which you used as well, which is much more of a self-service tool and you don't really need any IT skills at all. Even something like web intelligence, you need to be reasonably savvy with working with information. Um, you, know, you probably need to be quite proficient at Excel, for example, to transition to web intelligence well. Um, but mm -hmm. something like Explorer is, is completely uh, business friendly. Um, so, so that'd be my first point. Is is um, one if you you know just had a crystal reports tool, then you can build some reports, and but you'd have to write SQL to do it. Um, yep. You'd have to understand you know querying databases, and it, it'd be um, you'd need some some IT skills there. Uh, but the second thing you get with a platform is uh, the robustness around managing your um, business intelligence solution. So things like security. Um, integration with your authentication within your organization. So, yeah. yeah, so you know, um, being able to identify and authenticate you as a particular person and giving you access to certain business content but not others. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we do that via the universe and, and also for the um, reports and dashboards and analytics that they all sit within certain folders within the system and you give access to different parts. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the ability to automate the um, the uh, refreshing and distribution of those reports and dashboards. So Business Objects also provides that as part of the platform. So mm -hmm. even to the point where you know you can execute or, or you can have a, a publication set up in the in the platform, which allows you to, to run one report once against a data set, and then uh, effectively split that report up into multiple parts or multiple copies of the report for but are, that are then personalised to each recipient. So I run, you know, a particular store, so I get a, I get that one report that only has my store's data, but then that's mm -hmm. also sent to another, you know, 500 store managers who also get the exact same report. It's only been run once, but they all have their own store's data in there in that one report. So something like that is is very difficult, you know, to to build if you don't have that kind of platform um, to help you do it. 
Well, okay. Um, that's. I just click something wrong. Now, um, with that, that's very good explanation. So it's it's basically clearing my mind, and I I must tell right. you that I went to this. Thanks for that. I I went to um this uh, Bio Devs meetup in uh, in Melbourne. It's a business object developers meetup, and it was organized by uh, David uh, McCamis, I think. Yeah, uh, and and uh, he's a very good presenter, and he explained the new BI 4.1 in uh, detail, or I should say, brief what is changing and what is bringing. So, are you excited with the, all the features which is um, coming with it, or? Like and how they just now looking into three things at the moment is like reporting dashboard and I think self service BI only three things and I was just checking the SAP website today even they they brought they basically again divided it to the um, that one and uh, and they have mainly what they have done is they have introduced SAP HANA in each kind of uh, tool the BI tool. So, uh, is this a, like a, a a big big thing, or is it like it's just a normal thing for you guys? And um, to, or are you learning at the moment to work with this and Hana, work with the BI tools and Hana? Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, I I'm a bit um, geeky when it comes to software, so I always look forward to a new release and installing it, and uh, you know playing with all the new features. Um, one of the, the benefits of working for a software partner with SAP is you can access the ramp up. So the ramp ups actually just happened. I think it's just been announced uh, yesterday, which means yesterday, that yeah. um, we're, we're now able to sign up to that ramp up and probably get access to the software within a week, um, yeah. and then start installing it. So yeah, I'm I am excited by that, but I, that's also tempered by the fact that um, new versions uh, are always coming out. There's always a new version to look forward to, um, but I'm also um, there's there's some things happening in the um, SAP landscape at the moment that I'd like to um, to see improve around um, the integration with back to SAP and um, all the client tools. So I think that's going to take you know more than just one release to resolve, but that's something that I'm I'm keeping an eye on. And yeah. there's always um, sorry I'm bouncing the screen up and down. Um, there's always uh, the, the fact that a lot of customers will always be a couple of releases, releases behind anyway, you know, oh, so even though I, I'll get to play with 4.1, um, a lot of our customers won't move on to 4.1 for a while, um, you know, there's still a lot of customers, I met with a customer uh, two weeks ago and they were still running XI 3.1, which Excellent. is the previous major version, and uh, they, they couldn't move to 4 because they couldn't justify the expense to move to 64-bit platform and the the amount of hardware they'd have to buy to to just have the same performance that they've got at running out of 3.1, which is a 32-bit platform. So you know, there's um, for the for a customer like that, um, it, it doesn't really matter that there's a, a you know new 4.1 that's got some new features. Um, they're just trying to get the best benefit and, and the best performance out of their existing platform and utilize it in in you know innovative ways to continue yeah. to, to deliver value for their business. So that also interests me, you know, in, in how you can Maybe even use versions that are a few versions old, um, but still being able to deliver that value. Cool. I'll come to that the, the hardware and platform thing that you said. It's you know, it's um, to go, so, so it's they can't um, basically prove that they they you know, they can't spend that much and they won't be moving it to that. So I'll come to that. But first thing uh, is that with these old changes. They, you, you, rec you, you saw that now there's a new self-service BI. They, they put it on. It's SAP Lumira Cloud. So yeah. before it was called Visual Intelligence, and and I, I believe like because it be the changing market and all that. So SAP is keeping themselves with all the new things coming up. So and the cloud. So the, with the, with the Lumira. It's a data visualization tool, and is this is this more than that? Like, uh, you must have experience. You you have experience more than that. You have seen that you tool might have seen that tool in a in a real like right now people are using it. So, with this changing one, 
uh, with the changing of the visual intelligence to the Lumira, and then to be able to push it to the cloud. Um, is, is it like a, some sort of a computation or, or because they're changing so fast? And, and I mean, you get to, you have, have you seen anyone using that tool much in, the, in, in your kind of a kind of customer's list? Yeah, um, so I haven't seen it being used very much at all. I've, I've met with several customers who I think it would benefit greatly, um, even just one customer this week, uh, who are only running, they're, they're running Business Objects Edge, um, and because they're on a previous uh, version or license agreement for Business Objects, they don't have access, access to visual intelligence or you know, Lumira uh, now. Um, but hopefully they'll get that very soon. And there was one particular person there who you know, learnt web intelligence and um, she was an analyst putting together lots of information and visual intelligence would have been uh, much, much better for her particular role. And uh, I actually showed it to her this week and, and she was really excited by it and getting access to it. So, um, yeah. But no, I don't actually have uh, any customers I'm working with right now that are using it in, um, in anger at all. Mm -hmm. But I definitely see the potential um, for a tool like that. Um, you know, I, I think you, it's it's a different audience or a different um, user role who would use Lumira compared to something like Web Intelligence. You know, Web Intelligence or Crystal Reports, it's operational and management reporting. It's it's um, kind of bread and butter BI, whereas whereas Lumira is, is much more suited to an analyst who you know, analyst. works with a large data set and, and interrogates it and, and does a lot of slicing and dicing. And then the ability to, to then upload that to the cloud um, yeah. enables them to view web um, uh, sorry, web-based analytics based on that data set, so even um, that are, are mobile enabled. Um, mm -hmm. I'd still like to see it integrated back into the platform better, though, um, and, and to see that as the, continuing to be the, the single point of contact or the, or the main point of contact as opposed to this kind of divergence of Lumira, you know, being, uh, you know, your data set separate. being put into the Lumira cloud yeah. separate to the VI platform, so. That's right, yeah. So that's, um, what, that's why I asked uh, ask that co yeah, question, like, um, sorry, I'm interrupted you. Sorry, yeah, can can you please carry, no. carry on? Yeah, yeah, That's why I asked that question because uh, you know, one at one point they have everything. Um, been the whole solution is uh, sorry, physically based in office or in a in a customer location, and suddenly this Lumira comes in and it's talking to cloud, and then you can share it without any app. Or you can use, I think that's what they said, you can use uh, HTTP, like it, when you share it, it becomes like you click on a link and it comes in iPad and then you don't need an app for that, like no mobile like, or business object explorer or BI. So you can click on that and you can share with the people. So as you said, so it might suit people who are like business analysts or, or people who need some sort of uh, this self BI thing. But again, you are, is, does it mean like you are uh, separating your uh, data from the look, your customer location or your, your physical location to move in cloud and then this, this is like two locations you're keeping it? Is, is it yeah, like that? Yeah, and that's, that's, the, that's the, um, the, something you need to be aware of, I guess, when using it is that uh, all that robust security and authorizations that you have as part of the business service platform or even in BW, you lose that when you upload something to the cloud that can then be shared via a URL. Right? Yeah. Um, but what I see SAP in doing, I, I really don't envy them for the the current state of the market and what they're trying to do. So, you know, they I, I see um, that they're continuing to innovate around business objects, you know, which which is it, it's a it's a you know really large code base that they can't, can't innovate in, you know, really rapidly. But then they've got something mm. like HANA and Lumira now, which they can do much more rapid um, development around. And uh, yeah, so they're sure. trying to, I think they're trying to set the stage for the next generation of, of mm -hmm. analytics around HANA and Lumira in the cloud, and then also continue to innovate around business objects. And, you know, so some things are, aren't going to be in sync potentially, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm uh, they've committed to, you know, the... Um, ability to add Lumira content into business objects, so uh, into the platform. So I think that will happen. It's just that this is happening earlier because they can release it earlier. Um, you know, Sapphire is happening next week, so I'm yeah. sure there's going to be more announcements around that and, and Definitely, fleshing yeah. that out. Um, I mean, no one's got access to the Lumira cloud yet. I think I think you can request access to it, but it's not 
officially live yet. So I mean, I'm I'm waiting to get my hands on it and, and play with I, it. You know, being true, nerdy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. I I went to actually the website and it's uh, usually um, I try to download. It says SC uh, Lumira. But I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that, that download is just a desktop edition or it will give me the option to share it and then it will ask me to, but I couldn't download it. It just, I, I'm, it just keep asking me your password and then it just goes back again to the page. So I, and, yeah, I, I think, think it's I, the next version of Visual Intelligence will be rebranded Lumira. So I think that's version 11, 1011 or something, I think. Yeah, and um, I so we're currently to, on version 10, so yeah. Yeah, and I tried to update it within the SAP VZ, so I said, okay, Last time when I updated from nine to ten, it just happened. Today, so I just tried a few times, and it just doesn't say there's no update. So definitely, I think it's not available at the moment. Um, so now I'm coming back to the situation where you said you know the people are the customers are not ready to move to the new. Some customers with the money problem and everything, you know, like uh, or I can I, with the budget. Tableau public. Or I should just tell you desktop. It's sort of a similar, uh, like, but it does. It's like for maybe two thousand bucks. It does mostly the things that a, a thing, a reporting dashboard, uh, analytics. Uh, I I I'm just saying because I I read it. I have I don't have any experience with that, but I I compare these two. So, and the good thing is that. Ta Tableau, if you're a student like me, they give you one year subscription for free. And mm. then you, I, I just download it, I install it. Um, so, do you think the money, like, you know, SAP is charging so much for their software, or is it just because they have a name in the industry and other people like Tableau and ClickView, they're offering, I think, for less, but they all, they're, I have seen that. If I compare SCVG with the um, or Lumira with the Tableau, it's it's it has more to do. It, and Tableau has more things in there to do, and for less price. So, yeah, definitely um, the Tableau offering is um, I probably call it one of the niche offerings, but that's why it is so strong when it comes to comparing against a tool like Visual Intelligence slash Lumira, um, mm. and the same for for ClickView. You know, it, it meets a very specific business need. It's very good at doing that, so um, uh, you know that that's that's also quite similar. But um, the the I was actually asked this question yesterday. Even um, the the difference I, I see between the SAPs and the Oracles and the IBMs versus the the Click Views and the Tableaus and um, Tibcos and that kind of thing is that. Uh, the SAP and Oracle and IBMs offer a complete enterprise platform that does a lot more than just one particular thing. You know, so if you look at the SAP offering and you buy Business Objects Edge, for instance, you're getting, um, you know, you're getting ad hoc analysis, you're getting operational reporting and printed reporting, financial reporting, you're getting dashboards, you're getting self service, um, you're getting the analyst tools like Visual Intelligence um, mm -hmm. as part, all part of a, a platform which includes a really robust semantic layer, security authorizations. The platform is actually capable of a lot more. Things a lot of people aren't aware of as well, yeah. um, and uh, and then there's also the extension into data integration and, and you know um, data governance. Mm -hmm. All of that is part of one platform, you know, and and the Oracle and IBM, uh, in, in to some respects, are are similar. So I, I see that as a difference. Um, it means that in in, in potent, possibly in one particular area, such as the visual. Um, uh, analytics and analysis, like where Tableau and, and Visual Intelligence play, um, yeah. Tableau might be might be stronger. But then when you compare it to the overall solution, um, and you look at the benefit for the overall business, uh, I, I think it's a um, a no brainer. But then the Tableaus and the Click Views are selling directly into a department, you know, into a particular line of business, and that's um, also quite difficult. Is you know the traditional sell of business objects is to IT. Um, yeah. or, or maybe to the CFO, but when you can go in and sell Tableau to a sales guy or a sales manager who gives it to his team, then you're sh short circuiting that process and you're going straight, you know, avoiding IT, and that's that's also that, an issue for for the big vendors to to um, have to manage. That's right. Yeah. No. Um, so as a, as a as a consultancy um, company, 
Do you offer these solutions? Like, uh, or are you just bounded to the SAP solutions? You just say, so, yeah, uh, the way my business, yeah, the way my business is set up, yeah, or the business that I work for, uh, is that they have a specific line of business that focuses on SAP consultancy. So that's all we do. Okay. And we do SAP, ERP, and BW, and business objects, and HANA, and all of that. Um, and then we have a, another business line um, that focuses on, on other BI solutions. So I work quite closely with them from, you know, in terms of um, generic BI capability, but then they also offer IBM um, solutions. They offer Oracle, you know, OBIE solutions, and they also offer ClickView, I think. So um, our, our business as a whole will provide those, but my the, the line of business that I sit in focuses on SAP. SAP, okay. Well, that's fairly good. Um, so just to end with the BI questions, I have more questions. So I hope you have. So you're not. Yeah, that, uh, I, no, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, me asking a lot of questions. Um, you are you going to BI in 2013? I, I I see that you're very excited to Amsterdam, which is happening in Amsterdam. So so you're very excited. Yeah, so that's only four weeks four weeks away. Uh, and, yeah, and um, that's uh, in Amsterdam. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, and so you got a lot of uh, you, have you got a, like you got a sessions in there to be uh, to to deliver some sessions there. Um, yes, I'm delivering uh, three three presentations. Um, yep. The first one is on um, advanced techniques with crystal reports yep. uh, design. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is on um, universe design best practices and uh, new features in the information design tool in BI four. So all around the semantic layer, and then the third presentation is an introduction to data services and information steward, um, which is the ETL and uh, data governance platforms from SAP, respectively. All right. And um, have you worked so far with Design Studio to build like sort of a mobile app, or uh, you said because I've, um, uh, I've played with it a little bit, yeah, but not not very much. To be honest, uh, only a little bit. I've hooked it up to Hannah and um, you know, yep. built some charts and stuff and published it. But that's about it. <laughs> that's good. Um, there's a BI 2013 happening in September in Singapore as well. Uh, Correct. Yep. Yeah. So, are you, will you be going there too? Uh, I mean, because as a, as a uh, uh, just a, um, you know, I might be presenting there as well. Um, um, that's still that's good. the agenda's still getting worked out for BI 2013 you, for Singapore, but I might be might be presenting. Can you ask too. someone to give a free ticket? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, um, probably not, unfortunately. No, that's fine. Um, okay, so coming to Hana, what's what's your experience with the Hana? I mean, um, these days people can uh, like me. Uh, we can go to the um, Amazon Web Services, create a HANA instance, and then try to start playing with it. So, so far, what I, what I have learned about HANA is that uh, I, I just finished up um, uh, a warm up course in in memory data management from Open SAP, and um, right. and then I. I, I have a question about this warehouse after that, but but I, which I learned in that course, and. So in I connect as you see in my blog. So I connect the Hana to uh, from a scratch, like a, from a business warehouse point of view. I connected the dimensions and the analytic view. But in in your point of view, as Hana is moving very fast, and and uh, in the in the, in this uh, kind of era, like whole whole database in memory database era. Um, do you think in the coming years uh, we will be moving? Totally to the Hana, or is it like a, from your experience and customers all that money issues and or budget issues I should say, um, and the technical technical issues or, or restrictions or limitations uh, are we moving very quickly with the Hana to the to the new in-memory database implementations? Um, I think uh, industry is is starting to adopt it. It's um Yep. reasonably slow um, uh, in Australia um, I, you know I, I know of a handful of implementations of HANA in Australia so it's it's not you know sweeping the the nation by any means but um, it's it's starting to, to move I think from mm -hmm. a technical perspective I think it's um, it's a fantastic solution I'm, I'm really excited by it and um, 
it, there's so much potential there for customers, but it, it always comes down to the, the business case and you know justifying the investment and building um, something that's going to deliver business value, not just you know make your database faster. I think that's the, the key thing. Um, uh, I've got a, quite a bit of experience with it now, um, mainly from an analytics perspective, obviously, yep. um, with my role, but um, I've, I've you know, built little data marts in it, loaded data in, built analytic views and connected all the business objects tools to it. Um, there's, there's some great potential around um, using the XS engine. Mm -hmm. And I definitely see a lot of the applications um, in the SAP portfolio moving towards running on HANA. You know, uh, if you look at HANA, it runs on uh, SUSE Linux, yep. um, which is a supported platform for the likes of data services, for business objects, for information steward, yep. all the tools that I use. So I'm expecting that a lot of them, that, you know, they already can run on HANA as, as the database platform, but I'm expecting a lot of them to be... Um, sidecar implementations or, you know, being able to actually deploy HANA and business objects and data services all in the same system um, so that they're, you know, nice and close to each other, but they all just use the, the HANA um, system and HANA XS as the mm -hmm. web application is, is um, also going to, I think, um, have some great, great potential. That's right, yeah. And uh, I think they, soon there, there's a new course starting from Open SAP called, uh, it's like an introduction to software development where they're going to teach all, all this about the, uh, the HANA platform and the development, the XS engine and, and, and mm -hmm. SQL scripts. And there's another, um, f for a learner like me, they have given us an um, interface, a, a HANA trial on demand.com where I have uh, ex Eclipse and then I can connect and create a user access engine to create like the, all the apps in there. Mm -hmm. But just in a, just a few points, can you explain what HANA can do from a BI point of view? Because I, I, I'm interested in BI, so I'm not, I'm not really into the development and all that, but for, for, for some point you need to learn these things to just, I believe, I don't know, for like a, making a BI apps. As I've seen in your um, uh, the presentation that you forwarded me, uh, from the Mastering SAP um, uh, event, so I've seen that there's a, there, there were like few BI apps which might be which can be downloaded from the internet or, or some some vendor. But in some stage, if I if I'm able to or somebody else is able to create these apps, so it's good. So in just from a um, few words, what are the features that Hannah gives to the analytics and BI? Yep. Okay. So um, all the data is kept in memory. It's uh, highly compressed and it's stored in a columna um, table or, or data store, which um, means that aggregated data and you know your common dimension and fact interaction uh, that you would normally have in a data warehouse is yep. is highly optimized for performance. Um, HANA is also highly optimized for um, inserting records and also reading records out. You know, so um, one you can use it for a BI system that's um, you know much more near real time. You know, and especially if you're running Business Suite on HANA, then you're actually you're doing your analytics on live data anyway. Live data. Uh, but even if you're not, you can replicate your data into HANA so quickly that it's almost near real time. It handles very large data sets, you know, um, yeah. we're talking um, terabytes uh, if you wanted yeah. to. And uh, it, that is compressed as well, so it's normally um, quite high compression rates. Yep. And the performance of it is, is fantastic. But then beyond that um, is some of the, the stuff they've built into the query language is really impressive. So two of the things that I love are the unstructured text analytics. So mm -hmm. if you're loading text directly into your tables, you can be passing that for search terms um, and interrogating that unstructured text, um, which is which is really impressive. And then the second one is the predictive algorithm library, or um, yeah, PAL, predictive algorithm oh, library, yeah, yeah. Um, which allows you to to do a whole heap of um, apply a whole heap of algorithms directly to the data while you're mm. querying it and and returning that. So that's that's really really awesome too. So I've actually, that's something that I'm um, 
I'm going to be learning a lot more about is I've, I've actually just downloaded all the videos from the HANA Academy and I'm going to be watching them on my iPad while I'm on flights <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the next few months um, and, and learning more about that because that's that's just awesome that you can do that as part of your query. I I assume that I actually was thinking that you 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 already you you might be already into this thing because um, I've seen you talking about the big data on a Twitter and ask and you know and and putting and also the predictive analytics things. Um, th this uh, this uh, I'll come to the PayPal, but before uh, you know the business warehouse. So mm -hmm. uh, I from the Hana uh, that warm up course. I understood when when they said like uh, different scenarios for the transition to the Hana uh, so, so different solution to the for the, this transition. They they basically removing they removed in many options in three of the, three of the six options they removed the business warehouse out of it and they put the HANA in it. So you reckon or uh, you you basically say that business warehouse unless customers already have it that the business warehouse may not if per, if the peep customer wants a business wants a HANA then there's no point of giving them a business warehouse, and it will. Uh, it will yeah, be good. It's, <laughs> um, I don't think so. Um, it's a hotly debated topic on the it internet, is. and um, there's a lot of passion and passion about BW and about you know business objects without BW. Um, I recently got a chance to do a podcast series with Ethan Jewett, who's one of the other mentors, and, and he's got a BW yep. background. I've seen, yeah, I've and, seen um, yeah, yeah. So that and that series focused on why you would want to use BW if you didn't have SAP, um, yep. and it taught me a lot about about BW. And um, uh, there's parts of BW that, that I'm much more a fan of um, now that I'm, you know, now being aware of it. Um, things I like about BW a lot um, compared to what I have in business objects. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's a couple of scenarios. If you if you run SAP ERP, um, I think. You, um, you know, BW is is part of the the license. You can just turn it on, and you have a whole heap of standard content, standard business content, BA content that yeah. you can deploy. So yeah, so so the BI content. So if you you know you run um, financials, you run HR, you run inventory, you run plant maintenance in your SAP system. All of that has a has um, a large amount of of BI content, standard business content cubes. And queries that you can deploy, and it's almost as easy as clicking a box and saying go, and it deploys all this this standard content. So yeah. it's like a pre-built data warehouse, and it's and you know there's a, it's very extensive, and I don't think you can um, quite easily you know dismiss that. It's it's very useful for a business that's just deploying SAP. So in that scenario, I think you would always. Use BW. Um, if you didn't have SAP uh, and mm -hmm. you had business objects and you're running some other ERP system, um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a reason why you should use BW. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there are other tools in the um, SAP portfolio that uh, complement or um, you know uh, similar, such as Sybase IQ. Um, yeah. That is their non-SAP enterprise data warehouse solution. Yep. Or you know non SAP ERP, um, but what BW does give you is is a really robust um, platform for deploying an enterprise data warehouse, which includes a whole heap of functionality that you'd have to build yourself if you went down the route of you know IQ or building it in HANA. Um, mm. Things like um, uh, slowly changing dimensions and currency conversion and um, uh, lots of things like that. that they're just they're, they're all part of the platform, and that you just turn them on, and they're really difficult to build, um, and not well, not difficult to build, but difficult to maintain a standard maintain. around them in an enterprise data warehouse. You know, um, defining a standard and then maintaining it, yeah. um, I think, is quite challenging, and the implementation of that as you know the years roll on in your data warehouse, and you have different ETL developers and um, different managers. That kind of, but whereas BW forces you to use it in a very specific way, and you have to, but mm. the, there's a lot of benefit in things like that, you know, in, in the currency conversion, in the slow changing dimensions, and in the way it uses yep. info providers and cubes versus the, um, the actual info objects 
and that kind of um, you know metadata definition. Yep, makes sense. Um, I, I have very limited experience with Business Warehouse, but the, the experience that I earn, um, that that is experience. That's the experience basically which made me to think about BI side. Because I, mm. I totally I totally just thought, oh man, this is great. I mean, this is so fun, creating and you know the queen for cubes and having a result at the end. So and and that's why I asked this question, uh, like uh, with the Hana coming in in uh, uh, just and also mastering uh, when I was there at Sitmel, the SAP inside, SAP truck inside thing, and. That was a good opportunity that gave they gave to the students. Normally, you don't get that. So the the guys were talking about BWs going away, and you know, uh, now uh, I think one of the guy was Mark from Oxygen. Um, he said that um, it's BW is as BW is going is going away. So we we better just. We we better start get trained in get training in the HANA. So from that also, I I kept in my always in my mind that you know, and then also now after studying this, then I just found that maybe that's why they were just they were saying because they might have gone to training on HANA or or they have seen these videos and they said oh not business way house is going but but after you explain this to me and I have seen videos from Ethan and you. And it it can do much more. It can be a very good data warehouse if you know what you're doing with that. Um, um, with the so this is a Hana and business warehouse with the PAL with the predictive analytics. It, it, is this like a, it, I, I try to watch it, but I truly speaking, if, if with my experience, I I did not get it. Um, so. When I say I did not get it, which means that I I couldn't figure out is is this predict because the get the the video, the when it says getting started, in uh, with uh, Hannah predictive analytics, it um, it start with some sort of a video that uh, but it's not really a getting started video. It's straight away they say use this use that. Um, I just started it and then it. Is, is, is it like a sort of a they are they're showing you the the old business analysts you need to know the all this stuff before uh, you call those libraries or functions yeah um uh, I definitely think you need to understand a bit about what you know what what is actually doing for you what uh, functions you're applying and what data you're expecting to get back yeah. and then how you can then leverage that um, I mean I've um I I haven't actually used the power libraries in HANA, but I have used a predictive analytics tool, um, which is you know the expanded version of visual intelligence, yep. um, which connects to R, which is calling very similar functions. You know, you still got all your regressions, um, you've got your clustering, you've got your association algorithms, um, but I, I still struggled initially around using it. You know, you can kind of step through and follow what someone's done, but then actually understanding. Yeah. Why you would do this and and how much you can trust the data and that kind of stuff. So I actually came across a great um, link someone posted on Twitter, which is uh, um, it's linked to a book that was written by some psychology professor, and they do a lot of you know um, uh, statistics in psychology. And he'd written mm -hmm. a book about using R and and learning R, and it actually. I'm I'm still working my way through it, but that's been a really great resource to learn the basics of statistics, yeah. um, which you know, I'm happy to share with you as well uh, if, if you're yeah, interested sure. in, in reading it. And that's um, yes. that, that's been been really good as well. So uh, I've seen your one of the link that you uh, tweeted uh, the correlation analysis. Uh, yep. Yeah, I've seen. I read about it, and then you know I found it a new thing. Um, about it, uh, and it takes like uh, all this predictive analysis. Uh, but I, I am jumping too fast. I believe I still need to learn a few things. And I, what I'm trying to learn here is uh, how to use these tools from a business point of view. And and I that's why I thought maybe talking to a professional uh, can only be, be can the professional can tell me how you can use this in a business point of view rather than just you know. Download it, install it, use it, and then say, "Oh yeah, I know this too." No, so from a business point of view, so, how do we um, use this? 
Yep. Yeah. So you know, most of the customers I've I've worked with um, don't have the basics right yet, um, truthfully. So um, they they don't have really great reporting um, and just management reporting and operational reporting. They don't have that sorted. And so I I mean I'm really interested in in predictive analytics and and you know, when I talk to some customers, I can see the data that I'm already working with and I can see how much potential there is. Yeah. But I, you're not going to get the business sponsorship to implement um, a predictive solution if they can't even get their reporting sorted. Sort of, sort of. You know, and, and just provide a, a, a basic self-service capability to the business. So um, I still think there's a lot of work to do around that for, for consultants and for, for customers and organisations just to, to get better at at managing their information, that's correct. Reporting yeah. it, and providing capability to their end users. So, yeah. Now, uh, and that's I think that's why I asked a question uh, to you and Tammy the other day on on Twitter, I think a month ago. That do you need to understand your data before, bef before you ask questions and like, or before you writing a report? Um, because it happened in a, in a professional life with me, and then you know, uh, some something is asked to write. Somebody has asked me to write a report in a crystal report, and then I I, I don't know what that data does. So pulling mm -hmm. at that data, is, you know, uh, in the same way because those people don't have a basics right of what a, a report can do or what we need to pull out. Um, uh, yeah, so. I'm happy if you share with that that the link that you have for uh, mm. predictive analytics. Um, I think I have my mostly the whole the questions answered, uh, and now I'm feeling that yeah, I I I, have, I come to know a bit more about SAP BI, and um, the only the last thing is um, now. How you? I've got a selling selling skills as well now. You know, with all, all, all talking about that and the products. With with this business objects, uh, do, do and Hana coming together. Do you recommend to a learner like me um, to to learn everything? Or just look for the future BI stuff. Um, hmm, that's a hard question. <laughs> it is. It but, is um, because I, I, I think. Sorry, I can't answer myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know because you know. I, um, um, yeah, I I really think. Um, I mean, I, I think you'd be crazy not to be learning Hannah because it. Um, yeah. You know, with. In the SAP world, it's going to take over everything. But how quickly does that happen? I still think you would you'd be you know um, betting safe by you know learning some of the business objects tools as well as they stand. Yes. Something like Web Intelligence and Crystal Reports mm -hmm. is really widely used, especially Crystal. You know, um, for a long time they OEM'd it into everything, and yeah. it was part of Visual Studio. So a lot of yeah, you know, a lot of even you know small, medium-sized enterprises they all run Crystal Reports as their reporting platform. Mm -hmm. So, I think um, learning Crystal and Web Intelligence um, is a great place to start. But yep. you know, looking towards the future by learning Hana as well. Um, yep. And you know, there's a lot of opportunity with something like Hana now um, for the startup market. You know, so if you if you know a particular industry really, really well and you can design something that runs on HANA, that's cloud-based, you build a you know, front end to it in excess um, mm -hmm. and you offer a very specific solution, you know, it, it could be revolutionary for a particular industry. I, I think that the opportunity is there to do that as well. So yeah. um, hopefully that, yeah, I mean there, there's so much more that you could also learn and I think you, you need to constrain it back to HANA as a platform is, is really important to learn, but also continuing to look at some of the, the tools that customers are using right now, um, right and that's now, yeah. making sure that you'll be able to, you know, put something on your CV that is is usable immediately, um, but also mm -hmm. something that's attractive to employers about, you know, you've upskilled in HANA, and, and so you there's some kind of future proof um, in, in terms of you being a, a potential employee. Cool. 
that's that's very good. Uh, I I I knew that you're going to say web intelligence and case reports because a lot of people uh, I met in even in the BO devs. Uh, meet up they were talking just Chris reports and web intelligence so I noticed that and I uh, I, I just went in uh, online as well and I just try to look at yes people use mostly Chris reports and they're talking about web intelligence even Tammy when they, they're tweeting and the other people are they're just talking of a webby so I think that's the short form for that and um, yeah so Hopefully, I will. Um, so, uh, sorry, no, last question. Sorry, I just forgot. Uh, I just keep saying last, last, last. I think it's not going to end. end. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. The, the, um, the, uh, the Edge edition that I installed on my virtual environment at the moment is working. So, but I went to the official, official tutorials of a, a BI platform and they talks, okay, how to create a universe and everything, the things. But they are talking about the business, connecting it to business warehouse. So with the Edge edition, I think you can only connect it to the Excel or data source. Um, no, no, Maybe so I, I, don't know which, I don't know where you've gotten the Edge version from. But when you buy Edge, it will connect to any data source, any SAP data or non-SAP. Yeah, and you use the, the business object semantic layer to do that. So you'll need to install client tools and build a universe, and then that will connect to like SQL Server okay. or Oracle or DB2 or HANA or Hadoop or... Yep. Yeah. Makes and sense. Okay. Um, hope, yeah, that's that's very nice of you, Josh. Um, I really appreciate that you... you is, you connected to me. You, you basically talked to me, and you 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 answered so many questions on me, and I feeling clear all in my mind, and I just can move forward, you know, in um, what I'm learning and what I'm doing these days. And if if uh, just a last request, if I have any other queries, can we do this again, or can we? Can I yeah, ask no, you? I'd be happy to do it again. Yeah, yeah sure. You can and, always uh, hit me up on, on Twitter as well. <laughs> As usual, can you just please keep sharing whatever you have, whatever you're learning, to to the people like me, and uh, so that we can we can also learn these things, and we don't we just don't go blank to the people say we know this stuff. No, as far as I know, I think we I'm I'm curious and I I want to know this stuff, but I can't really justify myself that I know this stuff. Because I have to prepare hard and then say, yeah, this this is what I know. So just please keep sharing what you have, what you learn, and that will be really thankful to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks, Angad. Thank Thanks. you very much. Have a good night. You too.